Surviving the holidays. So many people get more depressed during Thanksgiving and Christmas time than any other season. Please watch the rest of this video and I'll give you some really important helpful tips to get through the holidays much more joyfully. Stay tuned. So many people get so much more depressed during the holidays. Thanksgiving and Christmas time can just be terribly depressing for so many of us. Mental health professionals call this time the busy season, unfortunately, because of that. Hi, I'm Dr. Monty, Dr. Monty Miller. I'm a licensed psychologist. I've been working in nursing homes for 22 years, helping normal people deal with terrible losses and hardships in their life. Terrible, they've lost their loved ones and so much grief and their health problems and they can't get up to take care of themselves. They've lost their legs and cancer and all kinds of problems, more than you could imagine. And I've helped them to get through these storms and I've learned a lot from them on how to help get through these storms. And I'm kind of trying to make these videos to help you guys learn the, some of the wisdom that I've learned from them. So in dealing with that, a busy prob problem that I have with, even with my residents this time of year is increased depression. So um, how do we get through this? Before that, please subscribe, hit the little subscription button, hit the little bell notification and watch my future videos. Get, click the little thumbs up to let me know you like this. Watch it all the way through. Comment, tell me what you think of this and, and how you battle with depression during the holidays. I'd love to hear more from you. Any of those interactions with this video help YouTube to show this to other people. So help me out and help them out by doing all that stuff for me. I appreciate it. All right, so why are we more depressed this time of year more than others? Well, I think a lot of it comes down to why a lot of us have problems with mental health issues anyway, our expectations. What do we expect during this time of year? Well, imagine a little picture of perfect Norman Rockwell Christmas or Thanksgiving where the family's gathered around the, the dining room table or the Christmas tree and you got your grandmother and grandfather there and mom and dad and all the siblings and it's just a wonderful time and everyone's laughing and enjoying being loved by each other. Well, those idealistically are wonderful, but for most of us, that's not the way this Thanksgiving or Christmas is gonna go. Maybe we have expectations because of our past memories. Maybe as a child, maybe when your children are young, you had some of those idealistic memories and you just hold onto those warmly and that's great. Or maybe you just see it on TV and you think that's the way it's supposed to be. I sure wish it would be me that would be like that. Either way, it's hard. And I don't want to minimize your sadness, your anxiety, your, your frustrations that you're alone on Thanksgiving or that you're not with some of the people you really want to be with. Maybe some of y'all have lost some loved ones and just Christmas or Thanksgiving is just not going to be the same without them. I understand that and it's okay to feel sad. I don't want to minimize anybody's sad feelings during all this time. It is sad. It's true. I can't deny it, but I always say that just because it's true on this hand doesn't mean it can't also be true on the other side of the coin as well, that there are sadnesses, but there are things, ways to look at it that can make you happier. Okay, so first off, we have to check our expectations. Yes, it's wonderful to have those times, but life is hard. It's a sinful, fallen world, and things change. People move away, people die, divorce happens. We all hate it and we wish you could do something more about it, but it's life and we have to expect that this is normal. It's not that you're an innocent, you're, you're a poor victim, that your Thanksgiving's bad when everyone else's is wonderful. No, only a handful of us will really have a wonderful Thanksgiving Christmas every year. Very few of us really. Many of us will have many Thanksgivings during our lives that really stink, but, or, or we'll be with our families and we wish we weren't because things are so chaotic or difficult with those particular family members. So what are your expectations? You have to make them more realistic and normal. You have to understand and accept that life is supposed to be hard and it's not always gonna be wonderful and perfect. As Christians, we need to understand that for, for better than others because we know it's a sinful fallen world. But given that the world is what it is, what do we do about it besides just that? Okay, what is the day called? Is it National Celebrate Be With Your Family Day? No. Or how about this is what we make it, is it National Feel Sorry For Yourself Day? We really make it like that, don't we? But it's not, it's, those aren't the names. What is the name? What is the name? It's Thanksgiving. It's a day to give thanks for what we have 
not feel sorry for ourselves for what we don't. They're both true points, but what are you going to focus on? Where did the holiday originate? From the pilgrims, right? They were dying. Many of them have died. They have all were grieving terrible losses. They were extremely anxious to not just get what they wanted, but to even survive at all. And they were happy that they had made friends with Indians. They had learned how to grow food. They had gathered enough crops and food to get them through the winter time that was coming up. And so they were thankful for where they were, even though they had terrible hardships. You know, their cell phones didn't work. They didn't have the television. They didn't have modern conveniences at all. They were living in the wilderness and they're just happy to survive. It's a good lesson for us to be thankful for what we have, not for what we don't. But one verse I like to use as Christians, we like to throw around the peace that passes understanding. Now, that's a nice little churchy phrase, but what does it mean? Peace that passes understanding. Another way, Monty's version of the Bible on that verse kind of goes like, you're happy when you really shouldn't be. You're content when your life sucks. How? That doesn't make sense. Some people I know in the nursing homes, they, they've lost their legs, they have no friends and family come to visit them, they've lost their independence so badly, they have to eat bad food, and it's just, life is hard for them. And yet they're smiling and laughing all the time. How do they do that? They feel, don't feel sorry for themselves, they accept things where they were, and they're thankful for what they have. Now in all Bible verses, it always helps to look at the context of the whole verse. What does that verse say? You look up above where it says that phrase. This is in Philippians 4, 7. Go look it up. In 4, 6 and 5 and 6, it says, The way to have that peace is to come to the Lord with a spirit of thanksgiving or spirit of thankfulness, it says. So, spirit of thanksgiving. It's not talking about the holiday. They didn't have the holiday back then. Maybe the holiday was named because of that verse. Spirit of thankfulness. When you're busy looking at what you do have, you don't feel sorry for yourself for what you don't have. All right, now I'll give you a good analogy. It's going to be harsh, but I want you to face it. Imagine an eight-year-old little girl, and it's Christmas time. Part of the holidays, you know, Christmas coming up, it's just as depressing as Thanksgiving for a lot of people. But imagine a little girl, eight years old, has good parents. They love her. They want to spoil her. They, not to make her brat, but they want her, you know, make her happy. So they get her tons of gifts and all kinds of presents. And she gets there Christmas morning and she's just opening up all kinds of presents and games and dolls and books. And she's got a new puppy and a little Barbie Jeep to ride around in. And she's just so happy. And then she opens the last present and she looks disappointed and sad and starts crying and throwing a fit because she didn't get the one particular doll that she wanted, that she was hoping for. And it's kind of a brat, right? You just want to pop her in the butt and say, get over it and be happy for what all you've given. Do you know what other kids don't have anything this Christmas? You should be happy with any of these things, right? Okay, the harsh truth is, all of us, no how many much we've been blessed or how hurt much we're hurting this Christmas or Thanksgiving, are like that little girl. When you look at what we deserve for our sin, and you look at what God has given us through His mercy, through his death on the cross when we didn't deserve it, through heaven that's coming is going to be wonderful, through all that, and even in the midst of your worst storm, what good things you still have in your life. We are like that little girl, and we've been given so much. Again, don't want to minimize your hurting, your suffering, your grief. But when you look at the big picture of what all God has given us, he's given us so much more than we deserve and we could ever really ask for if you really look at the big picture and really face that fact, it can really help put a smile on your face and think, wow, God, thank you. I don't want to seem ungrateful to you. Because honestly, we are. And I'm guilty of this too. I feel sorry for myself. I've been through hardships, been through a lot of financial pressure and stress the last couple of years. And it, I get anxious. I get depressed. I go, why me? And I have to slap myself upside the head and say, stop it. Get over yourself and appreciate what is good in your life. That's what I love about my job is because when I'm encouraging my other patients, my, my clients, I, I can't help but yell at myself, encourage myself to be thankful. Making these videos helps me to realize myself I'm just as bad as anybody else and I have to be reminded of this all the time. Be thankful for what you have. That's the way to find peace and joy and contentment. Even when you're grieving and you're sad and you miss somebody terribly, even when you're hurting and you don't have much, 
you still need to appreciate what God has given us. His death on the cross, he died while we were yet sinners. He loves us unconditionally. The God of the universe loves you and has promised a wonderful life for you more than we deserve. He's that wonderful and gracious and glory. glory. Part of that verse in four, Philippians 4, 7, no, well, first, I think it's 5, says rejoice in the Lord, Lord always. That's also part of the key. Is think about God and how great he is. Take a moment off yourself and think about him for a little bit. Do these things and you'll have a much better Thanksgiving and Christmas time, no matter how hard you're hurting. It's the truth. Your hurting may be truth, but the wonderfulness of your life is also true. So please share this with other people you know might be depressed on your web page, on your, on your Facebook page. Share this because other people need to be appreciative and thankful. They need to find that joy. Every, all of us get down some during the holidays. So let's spread this out. Please, I hope you can find peace in your storm through this. God bless you. Bye-bye.